It's Patrick Hotzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So today's tip is about, you know, how long should a patient stay in ICU when they are on BiPAP? And I can give you a real world example today. So we're currently working with a client who has their dad in ICU and he's on BiPAP for respiratory failure type 2, i.e. for CO2 retention. And they have found that, you know, by putting him on BiPAP and by getting CO2 down, he's actually improving. Now, ICU wanted to send him out to a hospital ward. And initially, the family hadn't done their research. So they let their dad leave ICU, go to a ward. And then it only turned out that he bounced back within less than 24 hours to ICU because his CO2 was rising because they could not manage the BiPAP on the ward. Okay. Now, no surprise to me, I have worked in critical care for nearly 25 years in three different countries where I worked as a nurse manager for over five years and where I've been consulting and advocating for families in intensive care since 2013 here at intensivecarehotline.com. And I can confidently and without any exaggeration say that we have saved many lives for our clients in ICU. And you can verify that if you go to our testimonials section at intensivecarehotline.com or if you go to our podcast section at intensivecarehotline.com where we um, have done some client interviews that can verify and vouch for the work that we are doing and have done. So coming back to our example today, can you basically go to a hospital floor or hospital ward on BiPAP? The short answer is no, because it is an intensive care skill to keep someone on BiPAP for CO2 retention, right? and get the CO2 down by keeping them on BiPAP for as long as it takes to monitor arterial blood gases, to monitor chest X-ray, to also make sure that patients are eating and drinking adequately or getting nutrition adequately, right? And sometimes that might be via TPN because if they're on BiPAP, um, they may have too much air and oxygen going into the stomach. And therefore, um, you know, they, they are at risk of aspiration right, which puts them then at risk of intubation, right, so that patients need to go on a ventilator with an intubation tube. So the same goes, um, you know, with intensive care at home. I'm I'm jumping a a little bit here when I'm saying the same goes with intensive care at home. Some of you know that we are also doing intensive care at home nursing. And, you know, when you are at home with BiPAP for CO2 retention, you also need an intensive care nurse for, t- for 24 hours a day, right? And that is documented in the mechanical home ventilation guidelines, right? That you can look up at intensivecarehome.com and I will link towards it below this video. So the bottom line is if someone is on BiPAP for CO2 retention and they're getting drowsy if CO2 is rising, right? They cannot go to a hospital floor. There might be the exception if it is like a high dependency unit or a very good respiratory ward or pulmonology ward, there might be the exception where some of, some on some of those hospitals, they can look after BiPAP, but that is the exception and not the rule. I argue most hospitals in English speaking countries do not have the capacity and the skill outside of ICU to manage BiPAP for a patient that is in type two respiratory failure with CO2 retention. Right, so keep that in mind. So the client we're working with is basically asking us, well, how can we keep advocating for our dad so that he doesn't go to the floor again until they have his CO2 under control? Um, and clearly, you know, what we are doing here now is looking at the medical records. And by looking at the medical records, we're looking at arterial blood gases, at chest X-rays, at medications that he's on, at ventilator settings, of course, right? And that's how we can find out how, uh, you know, what, what to write to the hospital so that their dad can stay in ICU because you will need that crucial advocacy in a situation like that. If you're not having the advocacy, hospitals will try and walk all over you, quite frankly. You know, if you know, if you don't have anyone standing up for your loved one, they certainly will do what's in the best interest of the hospital and they won't do what's in the best, best interest for your loved one, right? We've seen that over and over and over and over again. So by having a second pair of eyes coming in by speaking the clinical language by doing the advocacy for your loved one, that's when things will change. And again, you can verify that on our testimony section. So on a hospital floor, a hospital ward, where there are no ICU nurses, 
they simply can't manage BiPAP for uh, CO2 retention, right? That is as simple as that. You need to know when to put on the BiPAP, when to take it off. You need to know what to monitor, right? What to monitor in terms of arterial blood gases and so forth, in terms of patient's conscious level, right? It's going to be a disaster if your loved one leaves intensive care too early and whether or whether they can leave intensive care at all, right? It's a fine line that needs to be managed and monitored in a situation like that. And if they can't go, if they can't leave intensive care at home, the bottom line is that the best option then is to use intensive care at home. It's also the best option for the hospital because they will be saving a lot of money and they can free up an ICU bed. So I hope that helps and um, and helps you understand what we're going to do here with our advocacy and what you need to do if you have a family member in intensive care um, on BiPAP, for example, right? Now, because we get so many questions for families in intensive care here at intensive care uh, hotline.com, that's why we created a membership for families of critically ill patients in intensive care. And you can become a member if you go to intensivecarehotline.com, you click on the membership link, or you go to intensivecaresupport.org directly. In the membership, you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in a membership area and via email, and we answer all questions intensive care related. In the membership, you have you also have exclusive access to me and, and um, my team. You also have exclusive access to 21 ebooks and 21 videos that I have personally written and recorded. And all of this exclusive information will help you to make informed decisions, have peace of mind, control, power, and influence. Um, uh, making sure your loved one gets best care and treatment and so that you can influence decision-making fast, right? That is also very important when you have a loved one critically ill in intensive care. I also do one-on-one -on -one consulting and advocacy over the phone, Zoom, WhatsApp, Skype, whichever medium works best for you. I talk to you and your families directly. I talk to doctors and nurses directly. I also represent you in family meetings with intensive care teams. I handhold you through this once-in-a-lifetime process and situation that you simply can't afford to get wrong when you have a lot of money in intensive care. When I talk to doctors and nurses directly, I ask all the questions that you haven't even considered asking that must be asked when you have a loved one in intensive care. We also do medical record reviews in real time. We also, so that you can get a second opinion in real time, we also do medical record reviews after intensive care if you have unanswered questions, if you need closure, or if you are suspecting medical negligence. And all of that you get at intensivecarehotline.com. Call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website or send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. And if you like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell, comment below what you want to see next, what questions and insights you have. Um, I also do a weekly YouTube live where I answer your questions live on a show and you will get notification for the YouTube live if you are a subscriber to my YouTube channel or if you are a subscriber to our email newsletter at intensivecarehotline.com. Share the video with your friends and families as well. Um, and if you want your email re uh, read out quickly here and get an answer quickly, I encourage you to do a small donation with the YouTube YouTube Super Chat button and I will get to your video as quickly as possible. I have so many emails sitting in my inbox. I'm barely keeping up with making all these videos. And leave a small donation anyway if you want to support our work. Thank you so much for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care for now. Mm -hmm.